Today on Mead Mythbusters, we're testing if it is okay to age your mead on the lees after the primary. Let's find out. So this test today is talking about the main culprit of uh, autolysis, which is the post-fermentation process that your yeast go through after they run out of food to eat they can become kind of cannibalistic. And that's that process called autolysis. When they do this, they often will put off, off flavors. I would like to cut in real fast and correct myself. Autolysis is not the process that happens after yeast die. They do not cannibalize on themselves during this. They do actually do that when they're fermenting. Rather, autolysis is when yeast die, they explode and essentially everything comes out of their cells and their bodies. And that is what creates the off flavors. Now, not all yeast are the same. So this does not go for every specific yeast, but it goes generally for some yeast. Today we're testing how aging on the lees of a fermentation affects the mead. I have here in front of me two one gallon carboys. Um, that are the exact same recipe. This, both of the recipes here are um, 2.5 pounds of clover honey. We are also using two and a half grams of Red Star Premier Blanc yeast and water up to a gallon. Now I will show you right now the process I went through. Um, I mixed all my ingredients. I already pitched in the yeast. I also put in some Fermade O to uh, aid with some yeast nutrient. I could have waited till the one third sugar break, but I decided not to for consistency sake. So these meads are the exact same. They have, they have the exact same amount of ingredients in them. Theoretically, they should ferment the same. We are going to let them ferment through their primary fermentation. After the primary, I am going to leave specifically this one right here to age as it is. I'm not gonna rack it over. I'm not gonna do anything after the primary. It's just gonna sit for a long time. This one is going to go through the primary. Then I will rack it off of the lees and continue to rack it until we get off of those dead yeast, basically. This process is going to be a year long. This video is gonna take me a year. So right now, if you wanna help me out, hit that like and subscribe because this literally will take me a whole year to do, which is a huge pain. So let's let these go through the primary fermentation and allow this whole process to go to happen. It's important to note that again, this is not for every single yeast. Some yeast might have a greater um, susceptibility to autolysis or this process we are putting to the test. The Premier Blanc um, specifically does not one of those that has a, from what I'm reading, has a, a direct impact from this. However, we should still see a difference. Of course, I will be back after the primary. I'm excited to see what happens. Here we go. And we're back. It has been 31 days since these started fermenting and they are both currently at 1.000. They started at 1.083, fermented very nicely. This one's still a little hazy. This is the one that's gonna be aged on the lees, so of course I'm not gonna do anything with it. It's gonna stay as it is. Um, I am going to rack this into a new container. I'm gonna do a preliminary taste test at one month, and then at month three, six, nine, and then one year, I plan on doing more tastings kind of in a short fashion just to see if there's any difference. So let's rack this one that's not going to be aged on the lees into a new container. All right, and now let's taste test them. It's been racked over. This one clearly has a little more headspace because we lost some to the sediment. This hand is the lees version. This is the non lees, I guess is what I'm going to call it. Yeah, they smell the same. The same uh, fruity, yeasty um, aroma. Definitely very bright floral. Yeah, there, I don't have any aroma difference between the two. Ooh, yeah, definitely yeasty. <laughs> they need some time. Um, definitely got some bite too from that alcohol. Uh, it's not melded very well. There is char uh, honey character and nice presence, but it definitely needs some time to meld. Okay, that that was the Lee's version. Mm -hmm. Same thing, yeasty, bite, um, kind of puckering. It's got this little souring, souring side. 
I think um, that's just a flavor that will meld out because it's just a, still a fresh-ish fermentation. Yeah, no, I don't have any notable difference between the two. So that's a good starting point now. That's kind of perfect. Um, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come back in two months and we're gonna do another taste test and it's gonna be kind of quick. But anyways, we're gonna see if there's any difference at three months, then six months, nine months, 12 months. So let's come back in two months. We're here for the nine month tasting of this mead so far. Obviously, headspace is a little different. That's because I racked it and I don't, I've tried not to jostle it at all. Anyways, so this one over here is the on the lees version. Super clear, you can see my hand pretty well back behind. And then this is the no lees at all. Both been racked. Both are also very clear looking. I will say, oddly enough, I don't know why, maybe it's how I poured, but the one that is in my right hand here, this is the on the lees, is actually slightly clearer than the off the lees, which is interesting. Now, I didn't video the three month or the six month tasting, but I'll give you some overview. The three month tasting, um, I noticed on the lees, there's not an aromatic difference between the two. It's yeasty, bready, has a little bite. I said buttery. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Then the, uh, actually no lees version. I said honey presence, more potent, decently smooth. Six month tasting. I said bite, yeasty, alcohol punch on the lees version. Slight honey character, odd aftertaste, not smooth yet. That's the on the lees. And then the no lees, less bite, more smooth less yeasty taste, same level of honey character, but slightly more floral, still odd-ish aftertaste, alcohol burn is not as hot. So that's, that's kind of the notes I have from three months, six months, here's nine months, we'll do the 12 month. Um, here we go. Let's start with some aromas. Mm, not as much yeasty taste or smell. Ooh, and surprisingly, this is way more, uh, has a bigger nose on it. This is the Lee's version. Yeah, there's more floral. There's also a slight like, maybe a little bit of an acetone nose to this. Kind of interesting. This has kind of got a similar nose, but it's not as bright. Let's taste it. Let's start with the no Lee's version. Ooh. Dry, very dry. Very floral though, kind of flabby. I mean, as a traditional mead, it's not very good, I'll be honest. But I figured if I were to start adding variables in, this test is not valid. Yeah, it's not really, I mean, just like a dry, flabby mead. A little bit of honey character, not a ton of alcohol burn, a, not really much yeastiness either. It's okay. Switch over to the Lee's version. Has a different body, that's for sure. This one's a little more, I'd say like juicy. Because the honey character is also semi-present here. I would say these both have the same problematic flavor involved in it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. This meat itself is not very good. I think I started with quality honey and yeast and everything, but they're both not crushing it. Hmm. Okay, well. This is nine months, let's come back at 12 months and I'll get somebody else to come in and help me taste the difference, but we've done three months, six months, nine months, here we go, 12 months. All right, so BC, welcome to the 12 month tasting of, is autolysis a real thing <laughs> video? Cool. That's, that's pretty much the, the premise of this video. All right. So this is the, the 12 month tasting. I recorded a nine month. Um, I cannot say that I do not know anything about these. Obviously I do. We have underneath these um, la or labels or whatever, identifying marks to say which one is on the lees, which one's not on the lees. So 
obviously we can't see, I don't know, I've been switching it around and my brain's too small to remember where I put each one. So um, we're gonna go and taste them. And I want you to not necessarily need to identify, but what can, what am I looking for? What is what is the potential off flavor that people talk about? Um, you know, I think we are giving the scientific research. Okay. That is, I think as yeast die, they do produce. I, I don't know the exact off flavors. That's part of this. Okay. Um, I'm this is research for me. Um, I don't know the exact things. I'm sure it's in that fusel family. Okay. Family of fusels. I, I don't know that I've done any real research into this, so I don't know that I have any idea what I'm looking for. Well, let's other find than out. Differences. Well, yeah, let's, let's just notate differences and then we can we can talk about which one we said. So as long as you keep them in your right and left hand, we should be able to be fine. Okay. So let's just do some smelling, <clears throat> tasting things. Okay. Smelling and tasting things. <laughs> it's like a hashtag, like an Instagram. Just smelling and tasting. Hashtags things. are the new thing on Instagram. <laughs> Every word. Every word. That's how you know you're cool with the kids. <clears throat> okay, they smell very similar. Uh huh. And again, I'll. <clears throat> I mentioned this in another video we shot tonight, but I've got Oklahoma allergies right now. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm not being rude. No, you're good. <laughs> it's just a little hard for me to smell things. That's fair. That's fair. So this one smells more fusel than this one does. What fusel? smell are you picking up? I um I don't want to say acetone, but it's it's a it's an alcohol smell that's yeah. not like an ethanol smell. Yes. Okay. Um, it's it's not acetone, like it's not nail polish remover. It's not really like isopropyl, but it's definitely a a different alcohol smell than I'm used to in mead. Yes. I would agree. And I'm picking it up in this one. I, the, okay. my right hand is a little brighter than my left hand. I may be picking it up in both though. I get a more consistent aroma coming from my right hand. Which you will know what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, my right hand is the one that is more pleasant, mm -hmm. more mead-like, mm -hmm. and this one has a bit more of that sharpness. <laughs> it stings a little bit. It does, it does. This one, um, <laughs> Well, we, there could be lots of things in that whole year age processing that could have gone wrong. But let's try tasting them. Okay. And then same thing. Let's give some notes. It tastes, it tastes like a dry mead. Yes. It the, is definitely the, dry. This one does. Which he noted something as I was briefly explaining the process without giving away everything. He said, you know, people are, are going to wonder if these were stabilized. These were not stabilized in any form or fashion. Mm -hmm. These are just straight out of primary sat for a year. That, that, that's a merge opportunity. A straight out of primary. Straight shirt. out of primary. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't do it, I might. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a pleasant dry mead. I think more age would benefit it. Yeah. There's not anything in here that stands out to me where I'm like, oof, oof, Garrett, what about that? This one is, maybe it is the, the sheer dryness of it, but it also lack of tannin. I mean, it's, these are both just watery as mm -hmm, all get out. Mm -hmm. There's no tannin to save this thing. So the booziness, do you notice, note a lot of booziness in it? So I've only tried the one in my right hand so far. Carp it's a little bit hot, Yep. but it's hot in that way that like, if there was sweetness in here, you wouldn't really notice it. Mm -hmm. It's that dry mead problem that everyone always has where, they just, sometimes it just needs age yes. for that edge to polish off. I really want to get good at a dry mead one day. One that's, day I'll get there. That's my 2022 journey. Uh -huh. We'll see if I can figure it out. I mean, I I prefer dry meads and I feel like I make good dry meads, but I want to make perfect ones. Yes. The tough. That's it is really tough. That's hard. All right, I'm going to the other hand. Me too. This one's a lot worse. This one has a more of that... Um, Acid bite, acetony mm -hmm. like sharpness to me. Mm -hmm. It yes, it is unpleasant. It's almost a. I think it's butyric acid, mm. but that acid that kind of tastes a little bit vomity. Mm, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> There's just a little bit of that. It is. This one is. Um, it's definitely acidic. Mm -hmm. The it's distractingly like mm -hmm. so. The alcohol to me is more prevalent, and I can't tell if that's just because there's that acid in there that it 
is uh, fighting with. I don't really know. Okay. Mm. You know, back in the olden days of like 20 years ago, they used to suggest for the first like four months that you would stir the leaves back up into your mead. Mm. Let it settle and stir it back up and let it settle. I don't think that's best pa practice these days. But... That's best practice. There's a lot of stuff nowadays <laughs> that is not best practice. <clears throat> So if you prefer one of them, would it be your right hand? This one, yeah. Okay, I would prefer my left hand. So okay. let's, let's- So this uh, is the smoother, less acidic one. Yes, okay. and this back one, which was my right hand, his left hand, is more acidic, more acetone. Um, it's got a, I mean, it's got a fusel. Uh, it's got a, a very prominent fusel that is lingering. I yeah, no, say. it really kicks you in the, in the back of the throat. So let's go with that. The yeah, let's go with the with the one we prefer least. So mine was on the lease. Mine was no lease. Interesting. So when it says no lease, on uh, yeah, that's a no lease. This one says on lease. Very interesting. So just the one I prefer least was. I that is interesting that we are noting different <laughs> things. And but this. we're noticing the same things. Noticing the same thing. Did I mislay? Do, do we need to check the tape? Okay, so I've. Check the tape, and I am so confident that I accidentally poured the wrong cup in the wrong thing. I've tasted a lot of mead, and for us to see the exact same things in both and then have flipped results, I don't think that is a tasting problem. I think that is a error on my end, so my bad. I definitely notice that this one has... <clears throat> A more you, so painful... You think, it's, you think it's no lease. Or, well, that's the, what it says. I, I'll get a little draw of the no lease for you. Okay. And see if maybe I... I okay. okay, this one does. I, I get what you're saying. And I, I actually agree. And I think it's... Part, part of this is... Uh, I do think the word palate fatigue is important here because <laughs> we just got finished with a palate expander, so there's a lot. I do note a fair amount, and it might have just been, I don't know, I don't know exactly. There's acidity coming from this no lees. Yeah, whatever's in these cups. Now, here's my, my wonder. I no lees, yeah. did not fill headspace. The, the um. difference in headspace. So they've had uh, maybe a little less headspace. Like they're up here, you can see the lines. Mm -hmm. They had a small amount of headspace less because obviously you rack and you lose mm -hmm. things. So that's the only variable I feel like that was not controlled here. Okay. So that, that could be a question. I, I agree with you. I do think... How did they taste three months ago? Um, I don't remember the tape exactly, but I remember there was a discernible difference between the two. I don't remember which one okay. was preferred exactly. Okay. I'd have to go back and check. Now, I do have one more element to this. We are going to now take, and I, I have back sweetened, as you'll see on the screen. I've back sweetened with two ounces of honey in, this is a lot of honey, um, in a bottle, essentially. <laughs> okay. So, basically, this is hopefully bringing sweetness back okay. to it to see if there's any change. This so, might be the determining the could. determining factor. So. Okay. All right, so obviously clarity, I literally just back swing these yesterday. Yep. There's no, clarity doesn't matter, I would say, because there's no way to have cleared it that fast. It smells like honey. Yes, it does. Okay. Let's see the mix of, mixture of sweetness to um, the weird acetone flavor is not enjoyable. <laughs> the, yeah. I do think there's a difference though. The honey really does a, a good job of masking. It, it does. That is flavors, though. Yeah, when in doubt, back sweeten. <laughs> Sweetness sells. Without the, I mean, that's how a lot of these commercial meteries are getting away with things. Uh, that's what I was gonna say. I, a lot of times, when particularly new brewers say, "Well, mine's fine," you know, I did it all these ways that you claim are wrong, and it tastes great, and then you find out that their final gravity is like one point oh four. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that sweet anything's going to taste good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not me throwing shade or anything. It's just like, it's a, no, matter, I mean, it's it's a matter of course. Yeah. People, wait, wait, sweetness sells. Sweetness that is sells. Literally, I mean, that's a statement you hear everywhere. I would say that between these two, 
There's a smidge difference, but the honey does do a, a mm -hmm. pretty good job of just kind of like blanketing around and kind of hiding things. Yeah, so this one is the on leaves. Mm -hmm. I think in this test, I don't even remember what I said last time, but in this test, I prefer the no leaves one. Uh-huh. I would agree. I think that the the um, brightness presented within the no leaves version mm -hmm. and the sweetness go together. Whereas mm -hmm. this maybe didn't have as bright notes in it means it's just sweet. There's not yeah. the acidity factor. And yeah. so that's where I think the back sweetening can bring forth <laughs> Uh, balance sometimes for things. Yeah, there's just there's a few notes in this one that I don't like. This one is perfectly pleasant. Yeah, uh, like you said, I think they're too sweet, but um, we're not judging that. No. <laughs> so well, so this is I mean, r regardless, interesting results, and I would still, um, I don't know that the fix here or the end result. I'm sure people watching this going. What should I be doing? Should I be aging on leaves, not aging on leaves? I think there are more issues that could arise by aging on leaves sometimes, depending on your yeast. Because this is one yeast, mm -hmm. and every yeast is different, and it goes through different processes. And so I would err on the side of not aging on leaves, unless I knew that this yeast does fine for that, whereas you know this one doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that many people know that. I don't really know that. I don't have the data to say like <laughs> EC1118 does better after a year. Yeah, I've never thought about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you were to let a mead set, I would recommend to not age on the lees. Um, of course, cover up your headspace. I think that would have been, that could have made a small change in this whole process. Uh, uh, that's the result. One year later, that's the result. Yeah, it was interesting. It was, yeah, it was, uh, I would love to, I probably will not do this video again, <laughs> but um, if I ever have too much time on my hands, I might do something similar and kind of see what happens. So check out BC with doing the most. You can find him in the description below or there'll be a card. I think that's where it's at. It's over there. Something, somewhere yeah. over there. And then um, you can find him all social media links and all that stuff. Find him there to get even more mead content. And uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been fun. BC, thanks for coming. Oh, I had a blast. I'm, I'm always down to drink mead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will uh, catch you next time in a future video, and cheers.